Can you guys hear me okay in the super chat? You guys got me? Somebody throw me a thumbs up. Can you hear me okay? We got sound. Mr. Skeptical. Perfect, perfect. Tango tracker. Let me let me get this out of the way. I'm waiting on I'm waiting on Mr. Spano to either call in or video conference in. Um, we did change the time. We went a half an hour earlier because I got a lot of stuff I got to still get done with this time off I've got. But Tango Tracker, Dave B, and Russ Parton, you had sent super chats of the night before the second stream. And I didn't see him because the stream cut off and then I, I didn't want to go back and try and confuse screens. So Tango Tracker, Dave B, and Russ Parton, please send me your shipping address to Red Viking Trucker Nation. <laughs> Russ, do another one in there at gmail.com or support at redvikingtrucker.com. Either one will get to me. Put your full name, your full shipping address, and it can be a P.O. box in this case, um, and a phone number to reach. And I'm going to get I'm going to get one of these sent out. Now, if one of you folks, this is this is hustle, intensity, focus, respect. It's a lanyard for all your stuff. Russ Parton, thank you for throwing that money back in there, the super chat. We're doing we're doing 10 of these tonight. I just gave three more out right now. We're going to do 10 of these tonight. You got to give a super chat to be eligible to win seven of them, three of them, just in the normal comments. We're going to give them out. But I am waiting. I am waiting on, on Mr. Spano. I, I don't see him. Uh, I've texted him unless something happened with his kids because I think he's home tonight. But we're gonna we're gonna do this. I have quite a few quite a few people lined up if we can get them all in. Okay, Christian Figueroa, what's going on? Let me let me run back up here and say hi to you folks. We're waiting on a Mr. Spano to pop in. RJ, good to have you here. You're a former Leo DOT officer. Now you're a line haul driver. Man, I love I love being line haul. I love being line haul. I love interstate to interstate maybe a mile, maybe two miles off the road. Other than that, no back roads, no crazy stuff, all dropping hooks, no live loads or unloads. I'm digging it. Um, Lou, it was a great stream the other night. I know we I know we lost some links during the stream. We didn't get all the, the proper links you had sent me for some reason. But again, thank you for making the time. Um, James Conkle, Mr. Skeptical, good to have you here. Elijah Ray, good to have you here. And again, if you guys want to pop in, shoot me another email right now. If one of you guys wants to pop in, if you're currently in training, you're already out of the, out of the seat, whatever you want to do, shoot me an email. I'll send you the link to the stream so you can pop in while we're waiting on Mr. Spano. I would love to wait on people, but it's not in my nature. It's not in my nature. Because tonight we're going to ask my subscribers, Miss Pamela B, we're going to ask my subscribers that have stories about your successes out here. I don't want to talk about, we all learn lessons. We all learn lessons. You can share your lessons, but this isn't, this isn't call in to red or video conferencing because I'll send you a link. You can either video conference or you can just phone call in. But uh, this isn't let's talk about all the all the bad things you dislike about trucking. I actually enjoy the business. I find this a very, very easy business. I'm a little bit different breed of cat. Um, I don't need a lot of social interaction. I don't need to quote and unquote be home all the time. My, our kids are out of the house. So I'm a little bit different breed of animal, but I want to hear from you folks, because, again, I've got some unexpected time off right now. We were expecting to be back running. Part, pardon the gash. This happens when you wrestle with the trailer and you lose. It's OK. No, it's OK. My, my, my coconut's hard, but that's what that is. Got a, got a little bump on Friday. We were at the yard getting some stuff done. But uh, I, I want this tonight to be hopefully John can make it in. Still not calling. I've texted him and called him and emailed him. He says he'll be ready at 830. I don't know what happened. But uh, I would like this to be about you folks. So if you guys want to be on the stream, throw a super chat in there. I'm not begging for money. It's a whole different reason for doing it. You got to trust me on that. Um, and I will send you the link and we can uh, we can pop you in, let you tell your stories. Russ Parton, if you want to be in here, sir, you already threw a super chat in there. Christian Pagato, what's going on? Smooth operator. Good to have you here, Smooth Opera. Dong, Dong Strangler, Stangler, Dong Stangler, we sent you, uh, we sent you, a, we're going to send you a book. Your book is going out Monday. 
I also sent you a keychain for the delay in getting you the book. Not a keychain, but the but the uh, the lanyard. I sent you a lanyard today too. The lanyard went out. All the lanyards that I gave away the other night all went out today. All twenty some of them went out today. I'm um, including the people I bumped into. Um, Phoenix Rising Sun. What's going on, Phoenix Rising Sun? Cheesehead. Well, I appreciate that cheesehead. I'm the only person of 30 that you follow on YouTube that ask if they have sound. <laughs> well, you know, I like to check it, man. I like to check it. I like to make sure. I've been I've been messing with some other sound things tonight, so I wanted to make sure before I get going. Um, let me call you guys out. Hopefully, John will call in here. If not, we're going to get rocking and rolling. Um, Matthew, I just explained what happened to my head. Me, me and the trailer met. My coconut is pretty pretty solid, but the metal did get the best of me. Your email's down, Russ. It's good for you. Green Panda again, RJ, Walmart. Man, Walmart has signs. Walmart has signs. As you walk in their building, Walmart has signs saying we're hiring truck drivers. I've never seen that in the three years I've been driving. Never seen that, um, which is kind of unique. Brand uh, Zeke the Dragon, Zeke the Dragon, check your email, brother. I sent you the link if you want to pop in, sir. Check your email. If you have signal that you can pop in, Sanford Cox, Philip Congolero. Christopher Vol Volbrick. Yep. Homecomings, Christopher, are always good. Always good. R. Gordon. R. Gordon, are you asking to be in the stream? You want to send me a, uh, you want to send me your email to red viking trucker nation at gmail.com or support at red viking trucker.com you can just buy one um i haven't really put a price on them though because the ones i got really were to give away you know when i meet meet subscribers and stuff um because i none of, here's what's crazy none of the hats that i sell fit my coconut you now because i got an eight inch coconut um so miss pamela b <laughs> Thank you for the super chat. But uh, none of the none of the hats that I sell fit my coconut. It's an eight inch, seven, it's a seven and three quarters to eight inches in circumference. It just or I just it's circumference or is it ear to ear? I don't even know. But I got a big coconut and I'm I'm at the very last snap. And the other ones that aren't that aren't snapbacks just don't sit right on the front. So I don't even wear my own hats. Just, I'm not a hat guy anyway, but I do use these, I do use these keychains. I do use these. Mr. Skeptical. Am I going to fight Trucker Jim? What's that about? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Trucker Jan. I, we call him Trucker Jan here on the channel. Matthew Lewis, I just explained what happened to my head. Your email is down. Let me see. I must have gone backwards. Hold on. Russ Parton. Yeah, Russ, if you want to text me, I'll send you the link through text too, man. Okay. Sanford Cox, good to have you here. Got to wonder what's going on. Jeff Mudgett, if you want to be in the and, and Elijah Ray, if you guys want to be in the stream, please send me an email right now and I'll send you the link to Red Viking Trucker Nation at gmail.com or support at Red Viking Trucker .com, One of the two. Matthew Lewis is asking, what about what are my thoughts on the future of self-driving vehicles? You know, you get this this question a lot from people that are new to the business. Um, yeah, they're gonna, automation is going to affect all of us at some point. I don't see it happening anytime soon. Here's, here's what I'm going to go by. I'm going to fall back on the Woz. Uh, he was the co-founder of Apple, Steve Jobs and, and, uh, and uh, Wozniak. Is it Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs? Steve Wozniak? His first name Steve? Anyway, Woz was the co-founder of Apple. And he said about seven, eight months ago, he was talking about the Tesla he bought. And he was talking about all the things that were an issue with the Tesla working correctly based on his knowledge of AI. And again, the guy, the guy was the engineer. Steve Jobs was the salesman of that, of that outfit. Waz was the engineer that got everything rolling. Um, and Waz said, he said, this is nowhere near the next decade or two. Now, Andrew Yang, the presidential candidate, who I don't agree with his politics, but I've wanted to get him on the channel because he was talking about the self-driving automation, all that stuff. All of this is going to affect us somehow. I'm going to go with Wozniak, who lived and breathed the business inside and out. And he said his Tesla 
couldn't even handle tertiary roads. He had some other other things to say about it, but he said we're nowhere near. He said it's all hype to get the money into the investing. And uh, he's, that's what his, his belief was. So I'm going to go with the expert of the expert of the experts, a guy that built a, a trillion dollar business. I'm going to go with him. Is it going to affect us? Yeah, it's going to affect us. Um, hold on one second, Zeke. Huh, something's happened to Mr. Spano. I don't know what's going on. Zeke, I sent you an email to your email box. Can you not log into that, sir? Zeke, you got to. Zeke, I sent you. I sent you the link, brother. You got to log into the link I sent you, though. You can't send me a link back because it'll change up the it'll change up the camera. All right. But would love to have you pop in. Let me get back to some. Let me get back to some questions here. Or waiting, Jeffrey Jeffrey Mudgett, Thanks for popping in. Um, so that that's what I would tell you. That's what I tell you guys about the the self driving is on the back burner. I agree, Christian. I agree. Slow ride trucking. Miss Montana Hummingbird. I don't want to start. If somebody else pops in, we'll go with you since since uh, since Spano's not here yet. Man, John, I don't know what's going on. Do not know what's happening. You know, what's crazy, Montana Hummingbird, this didn't hurt and it doesn't hurt now. Like when it happened, it didn't hurt. It was like a little bit of a dink. And I got a pretty, I got a pretty hard coconut. I also have quite a bit of, uh, I got a pretty high pain tolerance. Hunger Games, what's going on? Another foot of snow in Milwaukee, Chicago. Miss Pamela B put a picture on her Instagram today. <laughs> she said, wherever her and the hubs are driving, they're expecting 12 more inches of snow. And uh, we hit, we hit enough where I had just, I was done. I was done. We got a little bit up there in Ohio and uh, Illinois going in to drop our last load before we came back for home time. And uh, I was I was I was done. I was good. Bless trucker. Bless trucker. Send me an email. I get you one. I saw your bless trucker. Send me an email. I will shoot you the link because I saw your video, sir. Pop you in here. Let you update the folks. OK, Lou, I'm going to pop you back in, brother. Here you go. Lou wants to say a little bit more from the other night. Let me get him the link back in. Bear with me, Lou. Doing it now, Lou. Doing it now. Just go. Just moving slow. I'm moving slow, Lou. Love to have anybody that does a super chat that wants to chat jump into the stream tonight. And again, I'm doing the super chat specifically for a reason. So don't feel like you're being left out. Please don't. Um, I have I have I always have a reason for my. I have a method to my madness. Bless trucker. Send me an email, brother, and I'll get you a link. Would love to have you update my subscribers what's been going on. It was a great. That was a great uh, video you did. Nice and concise. And you said some nice things about me, which I always appreciate. Even though I wasn't, wasn't expecting it. Red Viking Trucker Nation at gmail.com. Red Viking Trucker Nation, just like it sounds, at gmail.com or support at redvikingtrucker.com. Um, that's for Elijah Ray. He asks what it is. Banesh Sharma. Good question, Banesh Sharma. How to make it how to make it healthy as a truck driver. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, I have been on keto, the ketogenic, I hate to even say diet, it's a lifestyle. I've been on ketogenic diet lifestyle for almost two years now. I just recently in the last two months went to the carnivore diet, carnivore lifestyle, all meats pretty much. I still take, no, no, big mo, you don't got to pay to make a comment, but if you want to get the higher percentage of these I'm giving away and a chance to be on the stream, then you got to do a super chat. There's a, there's a method in my madness. Just trust me on that. Thank you for being here, though. But um, the, the carnivore thing, 
has been off the chain for me. Just absolutely. My body reacts so fast. It's totally off the chain, completely beyond what I believe. And stay out, like like Christian says, stay out of the fast food places and try to, you know, I, I'm going for walks now when I'm stopped. If we have if we have the time, I, you know, I take my walks and, you know, almost get hit by cars. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. Um, I sent you the link, Lou. Are you not, not able to log in? You got to have you got to have Google Hangouts. If you guys are going to log into the stream, you got to have Google Hangouts downloaded. OK, to your to your device. You've got to. Trying to catch somebody to come in. Robert Pelletier, Pelletier, good to have you here. Here we go. Somebody's popping in. Who we got? Lou. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. Are you going to stay off camera again tonight? Well, I don't really have much to say tonight. Yeah, I'm going to stay off camera, I guess, but I don't have any lighting in here. But um... did you want to? Did you want to add something to what you said the other night about the? the uh, oil field issue. Matter of fact, I saw today in one of the comments on another stream, uh, somebody said that Halliburton for the first time in years is not hiring right now. They have, they have stopped all hiring at their North Dakota locations. Well, the price of oil is, since the price of oil has gone down, generally speaking, we can pretty well be sure that there's going to be layoffs uh, in all the service companies. And also there's going to be uh, a slowdown in the fracking process, of, like we said before, from three to six months when the, the current wells that have been drilled have not yet been fracked. And it takes the service companies three to six months to be able to get to them. To right. Do fracking. So after that happens, there will be, I, I said the other night, a, a crash. Well, I was thinking it, it may not actually be a crash, but it may be a downturn. So we may not be thinking about an 80 or 90 percent crash, but we may be thinking about 10, 20, 30, 40 percent crash. And if you're one of the drivers that's working for a company that um, your business falls down 40 percent and you're, you're one of the newer drivers that gets laid off, then you're going to be impacted. Right. Right. And I'll tell you what, too, man, from the, the conversation of the night when you called in, we did the stream. Um, I had quite a few people in my circle that reached out and said, man, this guy scares me because they're out there in the oil fields. Some of them, you know, just recently got a truck and went out there in the last two, three, four months. And it's it, it shook some people up. But I, I don't you know, I, I would love to say that, that it's not going to be as fast. But like I said, when I saw today that Halliburton has also stopped hiring and, and, and I think uh, what did I say uh, three weeks ago that North Dakota just surpassed. I think they past Venezuela and oil production, but they're they're not hiring anymore. That was kind of an eye opener. Well, they're going to be laying off. I lost you. I'm losing you, Lou. I'm losing you. Whatever you just did to your your uh, microphone, I can't hear you. Okay. There you go. Halliburton, Halliburton is not only is not only not hiring, but Halliburton, Slumberjay, and all the other companies, Baker Hughes, all the other companies that are in the frack business they will shortly be laying off. And normally what they do is they, they, lay off, they lay off when there's a crash in the oil prices like we just had. They will lay, lay off anywhere from 10 to 30% of their workforce. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, a, little, that's a little bit scary. Well, hold on one second, Lou. Miss Tina Robertson, if you want to be in the video, please send me your email to redvikingtruckernation at gmail.com or support at redvikingtrucker.com and I'll send you the link to log in either video or audio like Lou's doing, whatever you want to do. Or if you just want to be on that super chat option to win one of the lanyards, that's cool too. Matter of fact, Lou, let's give away the first lanyard, sir, because yours went out today too, Lou. I sent you a lanyard today. All the people that were on the call last week, except for Trucker Brown. Trucker Brown, I didn't get your address, so I'll, I'll text you later, but if you all happen to be watching this, you're out there in the uh, in, in, in Never Neverland watching, shoot me your text with your address and I'll send you one of these lanyards. And, uh, but Lou, I, I sent yours out today, but Lou, let's go ahead and give one away right now. Um, we'll give one away to the, to the normal chat folks. So Lou, why don't you give me a, a letter of the alphabet? Give me two letters of the alphabet. And I'm going to go with the first uh, two names or first name that has both letters in it from the top. Two letters of the alphabet, sir. G and R. G and R, G and R. 
I should have said, make sure it wasn't your name before I checked that it wasn't your name. <laughs> GNR, Green Panda, Green Panda, Green Panda, you are there. You're also a, a moderator. Green Panda, you have just won one of these. Uh, you just won one of these lanyards. Okay, let me get in front of the camera. Hustle, intensity, respect, focus, Green Panda, shoot me an email. Support at redvikingtrucker.com. Hold on. Hold on just one second, uh, Lou, just one second. I got to send a link out real quick, okay? Is there anything else, Lou, that you want to add? And folks, if you don't know who's on the who's on this right now, uh, James, I just sent you the link on this on this right here. And I'll go ahead and put it back to me since you can't see him. He's a he's a forty year geologist geologist in the oil fields. Lou, when do you start CDL school? Well, we haven't quite determined that yet. We're what we're doing right now is we're working on getting our learner's permit. So. When we do go ahead and get into the school, we'll be a little bit ahead of the game. Well, you want to share, and I, folks, the other night I did I did two streams ac accidentally. I was going to do one stream, then something happened on the first stream. Lou was on there. We were talking about different charts he was reading. He's had 40 years of geolo geological background in the, in the oil fields. He's saying a crash is coming, and it's going to affect the drivers that are out there now. Um, if you didn't watch that, that video, go back and watch it. It's uh, two nights ago. You'll see it. And I actually say his name, and it's Lou, oil field geologist. It's in the title, but also um, all of this. None of us can none of us can look around corners and look around, you know, and see what the future is going to hold. I'm just saying, I try to I try to play the odds. And when I got a guy that's 40 years in the in the fields telling me these things that he lived it, and when I went to Oklahoma and I got stationed at Tinker, I saw the the downturn because I bought a foreclosure from someone who was doing very very well when the oil fields were kicking. And then that went away very quickly. So I would just tell you guys, go back and watch his video, watch, watch, listen to his dialogue. All of us are out here looking for a way to make some money. And you want, you want to make as much as you can for as long as you can, then turn left, turn right, and you got to turn left to turn right. This guy, how old are you, Lou? I'm 70. He's 70, about to jump in a team driving truck. Now you're going to go on with your girlfriend, right? That's the plan? That's correct. I think, I think everybody should bring their woman with them. Hey, listen, I agree with you completely, man. I, I, you know, I wish I wish I could get mine to come along because that would make it a lot easier of, a, of, a, of, an, of an event. Wolverine is out uh, handling. He's doing some business. He is here. He normally hangs out here at the house when we're not when we're not hustling. But uh, he might even link in and talk about some of the keto. But I do want you, Lou, when you when you get in CDL school, I would like you to keep us posted and also maybe pop back in and do a stream and and talk about your journey once you get in a truck. Because I think, are, are you looking forward to it? Or are you just, are you kind of, are you kind of a little bit skeptical and kind of worried about it? No, I'm extremely excited about it. Now, in the past, I've told you that I, I was a freight pilot with a freight airline. So I did that for about a year and a half. So I'm used to flying freight at 200 miles an hour. So when I get into a truck and I'm going to have to drive at 65 miles an hour, I think the transition from 200 miles an hour to 60 miles an hour, I'm going to be kind of like in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, you probably will. Probably will. Hey, James, if you're trying to log in, you need to make sure you have Google Hangouts downloaded to your device, whether you're using your phone, your tablet, or your PC. You have to have Google Hangouts downloaded first to log in to the link I sent you. If you don't, it's going to keep giving you an error message. Um, let me see if we have any questions. If you guys have any questions for Lou while he's on this, Again, you got a guy with 40 years experience in geological. Here's Miss Tina Robinson. Let's get, let's see. What... Okay, Miss Tina, I'm going to send you a link right now. You're also welcome to pop in. And it, again, let's, let me set some ground rules for popping in. Okay, we're not looking for complaints. I'm not looking for drama. I'm not saying that's you. Please don't take it that way. I'm just trying to set the ground rules. Um, I'm not looking for any of that. That's not what my channel is about. And I'm going to completely stay away from all that. So if you want to pop in and share your journey or ask questions, feel free. But this is not a drama channel. This is not any of that. That's not how I've survived and made the kind of money I've made in my life four different times, uh, six figures and seven figures once. It's not how I did it. I did it by being exactly what you've seen for two and a half years online. Um, let me see if you have any questions here, Lou. Hold on one second. Miss Tina, I just sent you the link, but you want to make sure that you have Google Hangouts downloaded 
to be able to get that. Brandon, you're losing your team driver in 45 days. Brandon, I have an email I will forward you. Brandon, do me a favor, shoot me an email to redvikingtruckernation at gmail.com or support at redvikingtrucker.com. I have a couple people that that uh, Grant did not take, and I'll send them uh, to you, and you guys can get together and see if, see if it's a fit. Um, there was another question here. Fracking contains benzene. Yes, I've heard that. Fracking has a lot of toxic chemicals. What do you know about that, Lou, about the, the type of chemicals and the toxicity of it, of the fracking? Well, I was also, I was also a um, environmental geologist for several years in San Diego. Okay. So I've worked, I've worked with, there's about 120 chemicals that are considered to be carcinogenic and dangerous by the EPA. And I worked with all of them. Uh, the most dangerous is uh, benzene which is one of the chemicals that you find in uh, gasoline as well as most other hydrocarbon products. There's, I think, some in diesel fuel. I don't know how much there is compared to diesel fuel compared to gasoline, but it only takes um, one part per billion of benzene to kill humans. Now, that, that doesn't mean that if you drink a glass of water with one part per billion of benzene in it, because most water already has a background of one part per billion of benzene. You're drinking water and the distilled water that you buy at the supermarket has one part per billion benzene. When, when I was in San Diego, I, I sent a sample of the distilled water to the lab and it came back with one part per billion. But what we're talking about is the normal person, if you, if you have that in your water and you drink it for for 20 years, you will get cancer. So wow. now let me switch to something else. It's kind of a- uh, hold, on, hold on a second, Lou, you're getting some questions here. Captain Jack, Captain Jack, by the way, how you doing, sir? Um, is it true that a lot of well water in that area is contaminated? I guess he's talking about any area where they're drilling wells. Well, I really can't answer that because I haven't really studied the, um, I haven't studied that subject. I'm sure there's a lot of scientists that have sampled the water and the, uh, the EPA has the county, the county authorities go and sample the, the water for, from those wells. But I haven't, I haven't followed that because I'm too busy trying to get into trucking and I've been in aviation for so long. Mm -hmm. So the, the answer to that is, I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, I would uh, I mean, let me answer this question too, Lou. While I got you on the on the on the channel here. Somebody's asking about CRST and they're referencing the trucking answers. Uh, his, you know, one of the, I'm gonna, I hate to even say it, crap company of the week. I don't subscribe to all that. Uh, I've met drivers out here with every company being that are, that are successful. If again, I don't, I don't live my life talking about what's bad about everybody. I just don't. So I talk about what's good with the companies that I've, I've been with and what I've done to make my money. So, okay, JWM, I'm sending you the link. I, I would just tell you guys, you got to look at everything comes down to, and it'll be the same for you too, Lou, when you get out there. Everything comes down to what's the cents per mile, what's the miles per week, and how, how many miles does the average new driver to a company get? You got to keep in mind, when you come out here to drive an 18-wheel CDL big rig with any company and you're new to the business, you, you're, you're statistically, Miss Tanner, if you would turn your volume off just for a second. Just your volume. 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 And then, yep. Just, okay. Thank you. Thank you. But well, still going to. I'll hear. We hear the background. Better? Uh, yeah, we, I'm still hearing myself. Can you can you lower the volume the whole way and then I will put a comment in for you to go ahead and, lower and raise it back up? We'll check it now. Now if it's still coming through. I'm glad to have you here though. <laughs> 
Let's do this. Let's do this. So she logged in, wait and hang up, and then once I'm done with Lou, call back in. Okay. Okay, is that good? Well, hold on one second. Hold on one second. Let me do this. Let me do this. Okay, she, she already did. Lou, you still there? Yes, I'm still here. Okay, I was about to go down a question for you there. What was I talking about, Lou, before she popped in? Yes, I'm still here. Can you hear me? Lou, for some reason, you are muted. Do you hear me, Lou? Okay, Lou went, Lou went away. How you doing, Miss Tina? I'm doing good. How about you? I, I was about to say, are you driving a truck? But it's easy to see that you do because you have one behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you caught me in my truck. <laughs> Well, this this is actually my first week on my own as a solo driver. Good for you. Good for you. A uh, little bit of my background was I retired from the nuclear industry. So I'm very interested in your geologist buddy there because uh, I'm, I'm the one who did the sampling and stuff like that. <laughs> wow. Now, let, I, did. You, I, I appreciate you calling in. I, I love having women on my channel talk about their journey. Um, so you were you were in that field before. What made you think about truck driving? Well, I uh, did the nuclear industry for about 19 years, and I retired in uh, California, in San Francisco. I retired my last uh, my last project there, and I said, you know, I got bored. I say I moved to Vegas. I lived there for about four years uh, after the industry. I left, and I'm like, I might as well just drive. So I ran out and got my CDL, took a month out of my life and <laughs> went to Reno, got my CDL. And I wasn't going to drive for semis. I, I was like, oh, I, want, I don't want to drive semi trucks. They're just too much for me to handle. I don't want no part of it. And I did driveaways and I did the uh, bobtails right. and I did Penske trucks wow. and RVs. And after about three months of chasing my tail doing that, I said, you know what? I'd probably make better money if I just got in the semi. Yeah. So I ran out and I joined, uh, signed up with Britain over out of uh, North Dakota. And I had a trainer for about seven weeks that I rode with. And um, I did all the driving while I was out training. And this was my first week completed by myself. Wow. Me and, me and my two babies, my little dogs, I've got them with me, and we're just having a heck of a time. <laughs> well, 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 let me ask you this. You being a female and having a successful career, you're also retired, so I'm assuming there's some other income coming in to give you that cushion. What would you tell the women out there that are more mature in age, that have hit whatever wall they've hit about? Because, again, most of them would never, ever think about truck driving, and here you are, and you're just beaming. <laughs> you're beaming. I have a blast with this. It is like... A glorified RV. <laughs> it's RV 101. <laughs> Who did you say you're driving for? Huh? Who did you say you're, say you're driving for? Britain Transportation out of North Dakota, Grand Forks, North Dakota. They also have a hub in Des Moines, Iowa. They do a lot of runs over to Canada and a lot of uh, over the road. They have flatbed, van reefer. Um, I do van reefers right now. Um and I just put that Britain transportation. I just put that in the comments too. Um, let me ask you this. Do you want to give the people that are watching a way to reach you to ask you questions? The females that might want to reach out and go, hey, tell yes, me. Yes, yes, I'd love that because I know when I started, I was interested in, I, I didn't count how many women I would see at these truck stops. And I'm like, wow, there is a lot of women drivers out there. And yeah. then you had the, the lady on. I don't know, about a couple weeks back where she was the one who uh, said there's a Facebook channel that, that I went and joined that from right. her information. And, yeah, you know, it's cool to have a woman to talk to to say, hey, how do you handle this? You know, how do you handle cooking? Do you do you always eat the truck stop food? Do you, do you cook in your rig? What do you, wow. How do you handle your laundry? What do you do for this, that, and the other? And it's just good to get the, the creature comforts down. But as far as the job itself, I highly recommend if you like to drive and you like to travel, 
this is the best paid vacation you could get <laughs> <laughs> let me say this because i couldn't have i couldn't have asked somebody better to call in and lay the smack <laughs> you know it. I, love, I love people to come out here and go you know what i can't believe this is such a good gig i can't believe that i enjoy it that much um right. what about, what about your significant other what about your family what do they say about it well, I don't have a significant other. It's me and my two hounds. So I have, I ride team. I have two babies. I have a Brian and a Precious. They're Bashans. <laughs> and they bark at me if I don't bring the water jug back from, from the truck stop. My family, my kids are grown. I have a 38-year-old son and a um, 32-year-old daughter. And they have their own careers, their own lives. And the only thing they care about is when grandma shows up, the grandkids expect gifts, you know. So I yeah. have to bring stuff from all over the United States. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. That's good. You mean, you mean to put your email address in the link here in the, in the comments? Sure, that's fine. Good? Yeah. Yeah, and I'll be more than happy to get back to people if they have any questions for me. Yeah, no problem. Are you, are you good with that, with that email address being in? Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. Let me put it in there while I got you on. Did you want to add anything else? Because John Spano just texted me and said he's about to call in. He had horrible reception where he was. I am putting, I am putting your, and also Miss Tina, when we hang up, please send me your address and I will get you a lanyard. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you calling in. I love, I love talking, especially to women that enjoy the business. I dig it. You know, you just don't. You, you're going to, matter of fact, you've already had a couple of people. Montana Hummingbird has already asked for your email address before I put it in the comments. She said, uh -huh. Because she's, awesome. she's about to come in the business. And you and I both know a woman doesn't want to hear what I have to say about truck. And they want to hear what you got to say. <laughs> well, you know what really got me headed this direction? And it's going to sound as crazy as off the wall. But while in between transitioning from my past career, I got so bored, I was driving Uber Lyft in Las Vegas. So I'm running around in my, my personal car, putting mm -hmm. mileage and oil changes and new tires and brakes and gas in my own personal car to take everybody who's vacationing in Vegas, Uber and Lyft drives. And it's right. like, you know, you can make some money doing that, which I did. I was, uh, you're in Vegas, so how could you not make money doing that? But it's like, it's my wear and tear on my equipment, my own stuff, you know, right. so it's like, the more I got away from that and the more I got into driving other stuff, it was like, it just seemed the right step to take. By the time it was all said and done, you're going to make more money doing it if you're driving someone else's equipment, like their truck. You know, if you don't want to be an owner operator, you just want to drive somebody else's equipment, let them take care of the maintenance. Let them take care of the fuel. You just get out there and drive. You know, and you don't got to deal with the public. You're not you're not dragging these vacationers around while they're having a party, and you're trying to be the same driver there. <laughs> yeah, and then they then they can give you a bad rating because you were yeah. you were you think. You know, yeah. and, and listen, I'm so happy to hear you giggling, hear you laughing, hear you just <laughs> digging the business. I, I like that. I like that a lot. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm very forward, happy about this. I'm looking forward to the next time you pop on, you have a lanyard around your neck that says hustle, intensity, focus, respect. Most definitely. I definitely even have a card to put on the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else you want to add? Anybody, anybody else out there watching? Anything else you want to add before you pop off? I got one more person in the wings right now. Jump in here. The, the number one thing that they need to do is they really do need to research because there's a lot of companies out there and they a lot of them want to offer this, that and the other. But unless you do your own research, you're not going to know what's a good fit for you. And when I say research, it doesn't just mean, well, OK, I looked at five companies online and I read their websites. Talk to their drivers. Talk, call them and say, hey, I'd like to speak with some of the drivers that you got. Who can I talk to? And ask them questions. How long have they been with the company? How, what did they like about the company? What they didn't like about the company? One of the things that lured me to Britain was not only the equipment is, is out through the nines, but it was the drivers that had left because the grass is always greener on the other side. They always came back. You know, they'd go to another company, oh, they, they promised them this, that, and the other. But ultimately, they found out that Britain actually was the best the best game they could come up with. And they came back to Britain. Yeah. And see, I haven't heard of I haven't heard of Britain. You're the first one mentioned in Britain. I have not heard their name. So what do you drive? What kind of freight? Um, I'm driving, let's see, there's beef, pork, uh, dairy, cereal. Um, I'm taking no, a load of plastics right now. It's gonna go to Canada. 
I guess my question, you pulling reefer or dry van or you have a reefer and then you just mix dry van and reefer between the two? I have, I had a reefer. The, the, the load I took last was a reefer. The last three loads were reefers. Right now I got a dry van. Okay. Okay. Well, listen, I so much appreciate you popping in. You have, you just loving it. Um, are you doing all 48 states, by the way? Yes, I am. And I'm, I'm going, I'm gearing up to go to Canada. I want to go to Canada. The load I got now is going to the yard and another driver is going to take it across the border, but my, I'm getting there. As soon as I get my passport renewed, my butt's going to Canada. <laughs> You're not, you're not worried about the snow. You're not worried about chaining up any of that stuff. No, I, in fact, I just got, we were talking about snow a few minutes ago on your, on your channel. I just got shut down out of Chicago. I came through Chicago and I stopped at the TA because the snow just came through there and it was just too much. So I just pulled her over, locked it down and said, you know what? We'll live the fight another day. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, young lady, when we hang up, shoot me an email back with your, your mailing address and uh, your full, I, I got your full name and I will, uh, I'll get you one of the lanyards in the mail. I so much appreciate you popping in. You were such a, a treat and a blessing for the time you came on tonight. I appreciate that. Oh, you thank you so much. I enjoy your channel so much. You don't know how much I've learned from the people on here. They're just outstanding people. I just love it. Well, they're going to follow you the same way you just did with all this stuff. I appreciate you popping in. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. God bless. Bye. <laughs> okay, Jeffrey, let me try and get you opened up here. See if I can. Jeffrey, you may have to call back in. I'm not able for some reason to unmute folks. Jeffrey, I had you in here, but I'm not able to unmute you for some reason because there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of background noise. So let's, why don't you hang up Jeffrey and try to call back in real quick. It's not letting me unmute you. There you go, there you go. Man, I couldn't have asked for a better, a better. She reminds me of Miss Pamela B. Uh, she reminds me of all the women I've talked to and, and chatted with in this business that really enjoy it, that are they're out here having a good time, okay? Um, I dig that, I dig that. Let me get back to some questions. Yeah, Tina's story was great. You could not at all. You could not at all ask for something different. My moderators, T. Scott, me, would you want to try and call in, brother? I'm waiting on I'm waiting on John Spano. John said he had really, really bad reception, and uh, that's why he didn't call in yet. Also waiting on the blessed trucker, James. If you got my my pet my email, please. You have to have Google Hangouts downloaded, then click the link. Okay, my moderators. Let's run herd. Let me go through the questions here. Should, uh, this is from Bad News Channel. Should I expect a sign-on bonus even as a beginner driver? Uh, so, uh, anybody want to comment on that? My thinking, my thinking is, there's John Spano. Am I, am I here? <laughs> there you go. All right. Turn your phone. Turn your phone to landscape, brother. It should transfer. There you go. There you go. There you go. Is there, right. is, there you can, is there a way you can leave it on landscape? Yeah. Without holding, me, uh, without holding it? Let me, let me get myself together here real quick. I got to yeah. Yeah. navigate around my uh, <clears throat> navigate around the old truck here. I think. Okay. We, while you're, while yeah, you're navigating we got, around. We got, magnet, we got magnets all over the truck. So I can just throw the phone all over the place. <laughs> well, turn the light on, brother. Turn the light on so I can see you a little bit better. There you go. There you go. Shine right on the handsomeness. Come on. Man, I was I was texting you, calling you. Where's Miss? Where's Johnny on the spot? Johnny is not well, on I the figured, spot. <laughs> I figured when I got three simultaneous texts, I was like, wait a minute. Wait a yeah. minute. Two and then hello. I'm like, wait a minute. I think I'm missing text here. Well, listen, you I'm have gonna... people. You have people that specifically. I probably had two KLLM drivers in the last 24 hours ago. Hey, I'm about to go to KLLM. One one guy's already down there in school. He's like, what do you, what can you tell me about them? I said, I got the perfect guy coming on the channel. He can tell you all you want to know about it. <laughs> can you yeah, hear me? I, I, yeah, I absolutely. I get a lot of people that bash KLM. Um, I think I think the main thing about the company that people forget is that uh, they get paid hey, John, off. John, 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 pull, pull your microphone. Down. Better? There you, <laughs> yeah, there you go. There My you bad. Go. <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little off kilter here. I come crawling out of the sleeper, you know. 
But, uh, but yeah, I, I think a lot of people have a misconception about KLM. And uh, one of the biggest things that people forget, yeah, they think the, the, the pay for the mileage is, is a little lower, but they get paid all miles. Mm-hmm. So if you're if they run you 300 miles deadhead, you're getting paid all 300 miles. So, you know, so it's, I know Schneider and a lot of other companies that have lease programs, they don't get paid deadhead miles. So that when that, when you, in the end of the day, when you're doing all miles, that average does, uh, make a big difference it it, it it even scale them out with kind of puts them up to par with some of the other big guys yeah well let's do this so too because some people don't remember that you know you're one of the first people I interviewed on my channel way back in the day you reached out to me um because you were a former business owner you came in trucking you had, you were very surprised if give them a quick synopsis of your story up till now and then we're gonna get into the leasing that you've been doing but give them a quick synopsis of your story up till now i uh, got in well i had a pest control business uh prior to trucking and um very successful in that up until about uh, 2008. Obviously, we had that little uh, little issue, economic thing going on, and um, I had a lot. Of, I was doing a lot of business for municipalities uh, and villages around the area, uh, you know, southwest side of Chicago, and uh, they stopped paying. Um, I became a, one of the, the last priorities. The bug guy becomes the last priority. Keeping the lights on and the heat and everything else becomes more important. So, mm-hmm. which is, which is, I mean, that's understandable. So I had to make a switch, make a left turn. And, um, you know, I was thinking about a lot of things and then, um, you know, my mom suggested and a couple other people suggested trucking. And I am thinking trucking, you know, I'm, I, I was a su- successful business owner and I'm going to jump into just being a regular old truck driver. Yeah. And let me, you let know, me, address, I think that's like the, yeah, let me address that too, though, John, cause that's so true. When I thought about truck driving, my first gut was what? Me in a truck with my background, with my education, all these things that in my mind, the arrogance that I was too, I was too good for the Absolutely. business, you know, and I didn't believe at that point before I went and spoke to some owner ops, I didn't believe that the money was actually there. I thought, man, I'm going to go out, you know, go out there and make 45, 50 a year for being in the truck six, six seven days a week. Uh-uh. But it was nothing like that. Yeah. I had to get through a couple, a couple months of training, but the money was actually surprising to me. Yeah, it was. That's and, and I saw the big difference. One thing I saw is the difference between company money and uh, lease operation money. Um, and I don't know if maybe it was when I was running company, I didn't. I just didn't do that right, and I just maybe have the knack for you know for being a lease off for some reason. But I saw such a significant difference that I, I it was frightening to me. You know, um, and I think that's where a lot of people may have that misconception with KLM. KLM, real, real, they did have raised their. Uh, their pay quite significantly. Uh, in fact, I believe it's up to almost 41 cents a mile starting pay. Starting up. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it, from when I started, it was 33, I believe. So, I mean, that's a, that's a huge jump. I mean, you're talking. Yeah. They, they, cents. yeah they've all had to bounce their game up a little bit to, uh, yeah. to, to, to attract. Exactly. Drop. Now you did, exactly. you came in with KLLM and you went in to the lease straight away out of the trainer's truck, right? Yeah, I went straight into. Actually, I went right off the trainer's truck into the lease. Uh, lease, we can't do that now with KLM. You have to wait three months, which which is a pretty good thing. But I went straight into the lease truck, got out of the lease. Um, I, I was having trouble with the truck. You know, it's issues we couldn't get right, and um, ended up uh, getting out of the truck. I think it was like June, but within three weeks, I was back into the lease truck. I called down there and. Said, look, I have to get back into a lease truck, and I, I realized that I had made a mistake. And um, I've been in a lease truck ever since. I started training uh, a little over a year ago, and um, a lot of hard work, but uh, real good money in training. But uh, you know, uh, like I said, you, you have to have to be a special type of person to train. I mean, because it's the truck. You well, you know, a team. It's mm-hmm. the truck never stops. You know, well, listen, listen, in, in, fair, in fairness to that, too, man, again, I don't know if it stops a little bit more because you're training and you're not really, I don't know if you're running super, super, uh, I they call it super single, where you're really not running team, but you're driving more of the clock after they get done. You know, some trainers drive half the day and the other trainee drives the other half, just depends on the company. But our truck, for, for the most part, other than fuel stops and other than showers, our truck doesn't stop unless we're sitting at, you know, the terminal waiting. It does get. My my video my videos for YouTube are, are going downhill in quality because I'm not always in the best reception. I'm not always in the best location or best frame of mind to do a video when you're only stopping for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour after running for two, three straight days. All that comes into play. And then I have intermittent cell signal, intermittent internet signal. 
but the difference has been I actually I actually enjoy the money. I enjoy the money and I enjoy the I do enjoy having the Wolverine with me and I enjoy the camaraderie of that because there's always a second set of eyes, especially if you get in a bad situation. Absolutely. No, that does make a big difference. I mean, uh, with with me training, it, that's not so much the case. Um, you know, you're not really going to rely on a student for, you know, for his set of eyes at all. I mean, you're, you're just not going to do that, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, you, I've been lucky. Uh, the past uh, three students have been very good. Um, before that, I mean, I was ready to get out of training with some. I could, I could tell you horror stories with some of the students. I mean, it's frightening to think that these, these are actually people that were ready to come out here on their own, get in this truck, and do this. It's amazing. But uh, well, I, I've I been think, lucky the last three. I, yeah, without, without being rude or without being you know uh, dismissive of anybody coming into business, I do hear a lot of trainers say that especially the younger folks that are under under 27 coming into business absolutely are very 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 needy and they're not they're not good at handling stress of any kind no, and, none whatsoever they crack they crumble it's like almost like you could see it you could see their their frailness some of these younger kids i i, I i've seen that and, and a couple of them that I've had in the really early 20s, 21, 22 years old. Wow. I, I had one kid that was mature at that age. And, uh, I mean, he was still, you could tell that, you know, grandma powdered his behind. You know, he, he still, you know, I need to be home at this time. And I need this. And I need, he was a good, he was a good kid. though. But I, the, the, rest, the rest of the real younger kids were, it was, it's, it's been a nightmare. I, I liked anywhere from about 28, 29, you're right. 27 seemed to be about that cutoff, but about 28, 29 above. And I've had a lot better, a lot better uh, success with the students. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's do this too, man. Uh, a lot of people have been waiting on you to talk about your leasing success because one of the things that I've, you know, you and I have talked almost at least once a week, sometimes twice, twice a week, depends on the week, sometimes just, just two or three times a month, just depends. But we've stayed in contact and I've, I've watched your journey. You want to share how you've actually what you've done with leasing and why it's worked out for you with with the company who other people badmouth and leave and they say they're just glorified company drivers as a lease operator. I've heard that. But you have had success. You're, you're training. But you also had success by doing it a different way, even out of the gate. And you realize what the mistakes you were making. Yeah, absolutely. I, I found that the the short hauls paid a lot better. So I saw the, an opportunity where if if I can run. You know, you're looking at the math. If I can run, if I'm going to run 600 miles a day for, you know, the, the 97 cents a mile, when I can run two short hops for double that. I mean, you, you start to use it. And sometimes you don't get the two two hauls, but if you can get a load, you can drop off, pick up a load, drop it off, and get to your next load, that's a successful day. You're, you're almost halfway in the door for your second load. And, I, and that's the way I like to play my loads. I like to always be pre-planned. I like to stay on my dispatchers. We do have a load board. Um, I can go on the load board. It's not the best load board. It's getting better. But I can utilize that where I see the loads that are out there. At least I know what, you know, what I can use with, you know, with my dispatchers as well, too. Um, right. And I stay on them to be pre-planned. You know, hey, I'm heading here. My, my ETA is this. My ETA is this. They know what I mean. When I, when I start throwing my ETA at him, they know, okay, he's looking for a pre-plan. He's looking for a pre-plan. Because I like to know exactly what's going on. I think that's really dictated uh, knowing that I, I want to stay running and knowing right. where you're going to go. It, it's a big help. You know, I, I see out here a lot of people. I see the complaints. But one thing I do see is a lot of people complain when they, they're working hard. I, I see a lot of it, you know, uh, oh, man, I don't want to run here. And they, everyone finds an excuse of why they don't want to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I've I, I very rarely turn down loads. That's one thing I don't do. I, I'll turn down a load when it, when it doesn't make sense, and it has to not financially make sense. And I'll turn right. down a load, or if I have something like with my family that I have to do, and I've told them, well, listen, I told you I had to do this. That's when I'll turn down a load. Other than that, I don't turn down loads, and it's it's rather successful. I think the load planners with Calum have a good. They're a big company. They have experienced people, and I think they have a good way, a good like. Uh, a flow of the loads where they, if they, if you can get loads and you stay on time, because I also see a lot of people deliver loads late and that will throw you off mm -hmm. because you, the two hours here, three hours here, you get held back at this ship or that receiver that can end up costing you 10, 12 hours in a week. And then right. all of a sudden you're, you're a load behind. Right. And that's, right. that's three, four or $500 on a paycheck where you're looking at your paycheck. That's, a, that's such a significant difference to making D 
the the okay money and good money. Right, right. You know, so there, there's a lot of a lot of keys. You have to be able to manage your clock properly. You know, I see a lot of guys who don't care a lot about managing their clock. They'll stay on duty. They, you know, they'll let their clock run on duty. You know, you know, I'm not talking about students or anything like that. To do that, that that's natural. A student's going to forget to go to the Qualcomm. But I see guys that they don't even. Oh, who cares about adjusting your Qualcomm? I don't adjust it. I go through my Qualcomm and I'll adjust to the minute. I see 16 minutes when it needs to be 15. I, I adjust it to 15 minutes. I mean, yeah. I don't either. You know, the realize the times where I've come up two minutes short at the end of my clock, and you, you right. know, it's it's a it's a minutes game. You have to manage your clock properly, manage your fuel properly, and I think just take the loads that make sense. And and really, I think KLM can make and run you the right way. You can make good money out here. You really can yeah. as long as you hustle. Well, you it's said something. Hustle. You said something earlier. Let me pause one second, uh, John. Uh, T one Mark DC one Mark DC. Thank you for the super chat. He's asking, what do I think about owner op custom critical for FedEx versus being a, an independent driver? I would tell you this for what I know so far. And again, I'm doing research on everything right now. The custom critical. There are a couple of people on YouTube that do it and they have their own channel. You can go look at them too. But the people I know they're doing custom critical, they sit a little bit longer, but they make more money. And most of them want to have a teammate to make even more money for the truck. Uh, all I can tell you about FedEx is they're one of the two largest trucking companies in the world. And uh, they act like it, they run like it, their equipment reflects it. We get green lights through almost every single scale imaginable, you know, uh, because of the CSA scores, because of the, the weight of our trailers. I rarely ever pull a trailer that's more than 15,000 pounds, rarely. Um, and we, you know, we, we normally pull doubles. The, the custom critical can be in the short box uh, van style tractors, or they can be in the, the doubles, or they can be in the 53 foot, or they can be reefer from what I understand. But I have talked to some custom critical people that are very happy doing it. Um, and like John said, they have their own load boards and they do a little bit of negotiating. So it's what you want to do. It's what you want to do. There is a process to get on board with FedEx at that level. I'm still looking at all that because I want to see what the economy does. But even if the economy dips, I'm still with one of the two biggest trucking companies in the in the in the in the world. Um, John, back to you, sir. What have you What have you done this last 12 months in income out here with KLM? Just ballpark. Uh, the last 12 months, uh, grossed. Uh, we did gross a little over 200k. Um, so I mean, that's a that's a pretty good year. Um, I think, uh, you know, and that's, that's the surprise in trucking. I mean, when you do the 200, you know, you, you hit that money, you, that kind of, I mean, obviously I didn't bring that home. I mean, there's costs, expenses, everything like that, that goes into it. But, uh, but to, but the gross $200,000, that's significant. You know, it, some people never, they don't see that money in a, ever in their lifetime with education. You know, you're talking some oh, yeah. people with some people with eight years, eight years of college, a, a bachelor's degree and everything else. And they don't see that kind of money. Right. You know, or, you know the, uh, and you you stay on a string like within 500, 600 miles of the house normally, don't you? Most of the time. Usually with a student, I'll take one trip out to California. I just like that trip. Uh, and, and then the rest of the time, I usually stay. The only time I'll go further than that is uh, when we go out to Pennsylvania. So they like to run me out to like Harrisburg, back to Chicago. And uh, I don't mind that run because that runs only about five, 6,000 pounds. Right. So it's like I'm running, I'm running empty, basically. So I, I never have a problem with that load. Right. Um. Let me do this too, John. It, um, I want you to stay on. Uh, give me one second. James, bless trucker. If you want to call in, because James was talking about on his video last night, he's actually at a truck stop. He was sitting until tomorrow. He took two days and just stopped because he said it wasn't worth taking a, a cheaper load. He's waiting on another load and then he's picking up his runs, kind of like what you said earlier that you, you know, you have to really schedule your loads and, and work things in line. So James, if you're still available and if you can pop in, James, the blessed trucker, go ahead and pop in. I'm going to put you and John both together on this because you've been out here 20 some years. You know, John, you've been out here now, what, coming up on four years? Yeah, three and a half? about four years. Yeah, three and a half years, a little almost four years. I actually, I'm probably only about three months more than you. Yeah, I mean, you came in like just right. Yeah, right uh, before you did. I remember it was right fact, before. The first time we talked, you had sent me an email and I called you and I was, I was like, two hours north of Laredo heading down to the Texas run. And you said, Hey, I want to share with you my journey because I don't think, you know, you realize, you know, this side of the business yet. And I didn't, but I was, I was like two, three months in the business when you reached out and you were telling me, you know, kind of money you were making. 
Here's the bless trucker. Now listen, both of you guys, let me make sure James can hear me. James, can you hear me? I hear you good. You hear me? Yeah. Is there a chance you could put your headset on? I sure can. Only to, only to cut the background noise off. Yeah, no problem at all. You got that blue, you got that blue ominous looking light, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I can't hear you now, James. How do you hear me now? There you go. Perfect, perfect. All that background noise is gone. And James, some of these folks don't remember the the interview we did with you. Um, what's it been? Yeah. Five six months ago? It, it was a while. So we can do uh... Democrat, Republican. I'll go red. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere, John. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Uh, James, James is a blessed trucker. He has a channel on YouTube. John, what's your YouTube channel name? Do you have any videos up there right now? I, you know, I, yeah, I actually have a few videos. Uh, actually, about uh, trading stocks, about in introduction. I, you know, I, I just put a few videos up there, and it's just uh, <coughs> Johnny on the spot. You'll find that uh, at YouTube. And right, on. I have a couple. I, I think I only have about four. I have about four videos up there. A couple of stock introduction videos, and uh, actually one with the Tyson Fury uh, Deontay Wilder fight. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, over that. So James, if you don't mind, sir, again, welcome back. I saw that you were you were gone. I heard some of your story, but if you don't mind, kind of catch the viewers up real quick on just what your journey was. Real, real quick synopsis up until the last six months. The last up until the last six months. Yeah, because you've had it. You've had a oh, very, yeah, well. you've had a very career, man. But then you also took a dip in the last six, eight months, and you're going through some stuff that these guys need to also hear as an owner operator. Yeah, I took it. I took a. I've taken some beatings in this business, but at the same time, it's been a tremendous blessing to my entire family. Um, like, like uh, prior to the last six months, I mean, a quick rundown. I, I started 18 years old in the Teamsters in New York City running uh, oil trucks and uh, roll-off trucks. Um, any, any short straight truck that was CDL class that I could run inside the city dump trucks, stuff like that. Then when I was old enough to get this, the, the interstate, that's that's when I started running out of state with RGN, low boy, uh, carrying heavy machines and stuff like that, all in the Northeast. And then I went over the road. I ran uh, 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 plants and, and flowers and stuff like that out to the West Coast, uh, Carlsbad, California. I ran that for about a year, year and a half. And um, then I came back, did some more local Teamster stuff. And I always ran back to the Teamsters because in between finding something I wanted to get involved in, that was something I was always allowed to run back to as long as I, I kept my dues up to date, you know. So it worked out for me. But um, from there, uh, you know, it's kind of all over. Heavy wrecker, uh, car hauler, uh, flatbed, step decks uh vacuum tanker trucks if there was something i gave it a shot you know right um, as far as money goes best money i ever saw honestly outside of the teamster stuff was boats hauling boats i, I, I mean really go ahead oh ridiculous yep. money in boats <laughs> well last night last night you said i made so much money but i spent it all doing stupid stuff <laughs> yeah i was i was an idiot i was an absolute i got a I have an 18-year-old daughter, a 9-year-old daughter, and a 6-year-old daughter. And most of my 18-year-old daughter's life, I was a moron. Um, you know, when I, when I had, when she was born, I, you know, I was uh, stuck in a biker world, you know. And uh, I lived that way, you know. I, 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 I went to church in a clubhouse. It didn't have a cross on it, you know. Um, I, I was a maniac in, in, in up until close to... Uh, I guess 40, almost 40 years old is where I finally decided that I needed to be a human being. And, uh, th that change in life is, is where success started to stick around. Any success I had when I wasn't acting right, I lost it. And that was just, you know, call it whatever you want. God, karma, me, uh, I was in my own way, you know, but, um, you, you gotta have your head screwed on, right. If you want to come out on this road and make it. You could lose everything or you could gain everything. It, it's up to you. Yeah. What, well, that's, it, one of the reasons, that's one of the reasons I wanted to get you both on the screen at the same time. Because, like, John, going back to you real quick, you already had a business mindset. And you already taken some losses. And then you come out here. You come out here and you're like, wait a second. I can make $100,000 plus just driving a tractor trailer? And they're going to pay me on time? 
that's that's the whole thing. I mean, I you know when you I have four I have four kids at home, so and and nobody to watch them. So my wife has to you know be there for them. Which, in my opinion, there's no one better to raise your kids than your wife anyway. So that's yeah. that right there. That's the best thing to have. I, I if we we had a struggle financially, and I had to get out here and do this, that was fine. Um, but, but like you said, this has been an unbelievable surprise to me. To the money that's been in this business, the ability that if you want to hustle, you can make it. It's there for you. And that's right. the key. It's there for you. If you don't, if you don't want to work hard now, I can, I, you know, when, when my trading gets a little, a little bit better and I, and my, and I'm, I'm build, building back the pest control and uh, it's, it's getting, you know, it's coming along pretty successfully. So I'm thinking that probably by about June or July, I might be only be in this truck about four days a week. I might only be in the truck four days to pay the truck off and bring home five, six hundred bucks. Really? And be home Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to leave the truck. I, I want to pay off the truck. I want to have somebody in the truck. I, I want to drive a truck. But I want to be, you know, hey, maybe it's when I want to, hey, I got to go to California to load the paint too good when I want to get out of the house and I need a little reprieve, you know? But, uh, <laughs> yeah. but it's something I'm not going to give up. I love being on the road. I love doing it. But uh, I have four little kids and um, my little guy, it's, he's he's missing his daddy and it's yeah, all of them are but him in particular he's only three and i've been gone the majority of his life so i'm i'm gonna try to get that you know stick around the house a little more over the next four or five years build on my trading and but i'm but trucking has allowed me to do that if it wasn't for trucking i, I there's no way i'd be able to open a trading account and be able to sit in my house and trade there's no way i'd be able to i was able to reinvest in my pest control company and rebuild it there's no way so right. i mean th this has been for even for people that say I don't even want to do this, bite down for two three years and you can you could turn your life around. Well, I think I think both of you. I mean, he, I'm about to get back to James and ask him a question too. But again, you know, James has already gone through so much. Like he said, he kind of hit a wall and realized when he started living right and doing right, everything began going right. And when you hit that same wall. I hit the wall hard. And but this business has rewarded me for putting some hustle in. Now, James, you have a big family too, but you have a farm you you guys live on, right? Well, it's a ranch. We don't really grow anything. We just raise cows and, and horses and dogs. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My wife would... has her. I, I'm blessed in, in so many ways, man. My wife has a career. You know what I mean? Um, she's able to function her career from the ranch. Um, she occasionally will have to go on a business trip. Um, our oldest daughter helps out with the kids and the animals when she's gone. But, you know, it's. It's uh, I, I know a lot of guys that are on the road there. They might have a stay at home wife that are raising kids. And uh, I'm we're very fortunate, man. And it took a, it was a long road to get here to, to be this fortunate. It, it really was. It was it's only the last few years. You know, we've we've made it and, and, and fell on our face and made it and fell on our face. You know, like like you, you you made it in so many things and, and had things fall apart out from under you and you rebuild again. All you can do is rebuild again. You know, you find yeah. something that works and you, and you do it. You rebuild. And this this like I've said in that interview I did with you months ago, this business right here can afford you so much no matter what aspect, as long as you use your head. And it doesn't matter how you get in here. I got in a lease purchase deal. It went bad. But when it was good, it was really good. And right. I learned some things and, you know, I, I realized what was going on and how I was being taken advantage of and what I needed to do to better this situation for myself. They didn't like that too much. And, you know, <laughs> no, they, they aggressively uh, came at me trying to ruin me. And they literally they, would they have a conversation with good luck, you know, and and I, I don't need luck. I'm blessed. I, I'm going to be just fine. Good luck to you guys. Now they they don't want to get in a courtroom with me. I'm, uh, they'll get destroyed. They they made so many mistakes and openly talked about it. Right. Uh, you know they, they and foolish are the people who are employed by those companies. They speak about these things that they really don't understand. They don't even understand what they're doing wrong until they're in a courtroom and they lose. And next week they have to change the name of their business because they stuck it to somebody improperly which this particular, I did my research on this leasing company long before I got involved with them. Um, they've had court issues many times for people trying to pay out the lease and they wouldn't allow them to. And this wow. is kind of a, a, a similar scenario. Um, 
my lease didn't obligate me to pay them outright, but I wanted to know what an outright uh, buyout would cost me at that particular juncture. They were trying to get me to to go lease on to other companies they were in bed with, and I had no interest in that. I was all about my own authority, uh, finding my own work, and I gave them all my bank information. I gave them everything that they wanted, and they ma- they figured it was never going to work, that I was going to fall down and fail. I went to my state. I got a temp apportion tag. You can only have one one time for a certain amount of time in the state of Tennessee. Um I, I I didn't have my own IRP account. I was running on a on a plate from the company I was leased on to prior. Uh, I got out there on the road, and from the road, I was trying to handle all the the clerical office work, trying to get them to uh, to set 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 me up with with the the documents I needed to get an apportion tag on that truck, and they wouldn't. They they just ignored me. They wouldn't answer phone calls, emails. I, I, I always communicated everything to two separate uh, individuals with the same company. One was in Texas. One was in Illinois. Um, I, if I sent anything to this guy in Texas, I sent the same stuff to the guy in Illinois. That way nobody – and I did everything in a fashion that was easily provable. Uh, right. ten, Tennessee is uh, – I'm not sure what what how to properly say it, but along with Texas is a sole uh, single single party consent state. Right, Tennessee is Texas is uh, being a resident Tennessee, and the line that I use is 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 a Tennessee line. I recorded all my calls with with Panther, uh, which was the company I was leased to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say the leasing company BCL, also known as Barnett Capital. Um, I recorded all my calls with multiple representatives of that company. Um, it, it went smoothly as long as things go their way. Nowhere in the lease did it say that if I left the company that me and the truck were leased onto, nowhere in there did it say I couldn't go my own way and find what it is I wanted to do. Um, it just said that, ambiguously, it said that they had to approve it. But the way that they worded it, not too much could hang on that approval. As right. long as I was current and paying, which I always did. Uh, let me let me ask let me ask John this. Hold on one second. Uh, sure. If you don't mind, James? Sure, uh, sure. Go ahead. On, on your on your truck, John, is yours? Can you take yours with yours to stay with KLM if you leave? Um, this truck. Now that's the one thing with KLM. If if you're not paid, it stays with KLM. Yeah. That's the okay. one thing about this the company that I, it, and if and I'm not really sure how it, we, getting even into litigation or anything I talk how is it possible that a company can do that to you where it's are not in the contract lease, are I'm you a, a lease purchase or yes. are you a, is it a lease, a lease purchase? purchase yes so how so how could they keep it exactly if it's the actual purchase exactly that's the whole thing that's and now I also believe now I'm a, I know there was something going on in California with in the court system, but I have not, you know, I really don't, I'd be kind of stepping out of bounds. Um, and I know it was more than just KLM. There's a, quite a few companies that were involved. Is uh, KLM a California company? Uh, they have, no, they're based out of Mississippi. Okay. They're based out of Jackson, Mississippi. Well, without getting, and, and let me, for both you guys, I don't really want to talk about specific companies, good or bad. Um, oh, only because, only because there are repercussions legally and I don't want it to be against me on my channel. So. <laughs> But that is one thing that I, you know, and I will say that, I mean, it's something that I, I, I wish it was a little different. And that's one thing I, 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 and I, that I do like this about Prime and other companies. When, when you're leasing, you take that truck with you. And that is, that's huge. That's a, that's the thing that if you're wanting, but for me, if, if somebody, I know I'm going to be here to pay off this truck. I'm, I'm okay. I, I see my paychecks. Even when I'm solo, I'm happy with them. So it's not something that bothers me. I know I can stick it out here and I'm doing just fine. Um, yeah. Now, if it, now, also, a lot of people look at the lease per, look at the lease option where this is a walkaway lease. So I see a lot of guys take it where they're just renting the truck because mm-hmm. the lease payment is so low; it's only five thirty five a week, opposed to a lot of these other companies where you're seven hundreds, eight hundreds, even the thousands. It's manageable where you could look at it as you're just renting a truck and making a you know pretty darn good paycheck for renting a truck. What's because especially when you train, what's the maintenance deal? Uh, we have eleven cents a mile. They take out up to ten thousand dollars, and I that can it. get filled up pretty, pretty quickly. 
Yeah. And like I said, when I when I switched to my first truck, I had no problem. I didn't even have to say a word. About seven weeks after that, the date of me turning in my first truck, my check was at you know the check for my maintenance fund was at the house with nothing deducted. Well, let me let me say let me say this too. While I got you guys here. Hold on one second. Let me pull it up on my on my computer. I'm going to share my screen because all the folks that are out there, because we're talking about you know great subjects. And I think one of the things these companies count on, all these companies count on you not being informed. I, I, would, I think no, you got big both, time. <laughs> you guys would both agree with that. Well, hold on. I'm going to share my screen. Just don't go anywhere. They just love the idea of tricking people into thinking that they're running their own business when they're not in a lot of cases. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's right. They and they always refer to it as your business, you know. Yeah. If you go, if you guys go to redvikingtrucker.com, I've had this this lease calculator on my website now for almost a month and a half, two months. You see it on the screen now. If you click on the menu button here, it's the second option or third option down. The, the home page goes to my coaching call option. Give it a second to load. But you can put all your stuff in here, okay? The ones that are in blue, are they, they total uh, from the, the calculator. The ones that are in white, you actually put information in there. It'll tell you what you're running cents per mile and what you're running, you know, net per mile. Yep, very good, and very good tool. No, yeah, there's no, there's no again, I, 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 I'll say this. I've not heard one person talk about something like this for anybody before you jump into a lease. And here you've got, I'm going to jump back to you guys now. Here you've got two guys in the business, and in your case, you know somebody on the on the speed, uh, James, and you look like a, like a biker, but you actually come from a law enforcement family in New York, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, everybody. I am I am the, for lack of a better term, I am the odd man out, the black sheep, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> My entire family is is loaded up with with law enforcement. Yeah, but I, I would ask you both at this calculator that I'm showing on the screen right now. If you're about to jump into a lease, just get some of these numbers and put them in and figure out what you're what you're going to be running freight for. I would tell you this. There's lease operators out there tonight that are out there running freight for less than what I make, you know, driving for FedEx or even my, my past two companies. When they, when they factor in all their expenses, they're making less per mile and responsible for, you know, 75 percent more than I am. Yeah. And they don't even know that they don't even know their math. They have no idea. I, this I, is I've actually place. I've actually spoken to some FedEx guys who who were their lives were falling apart because they weren't paid right. Yeah. Well that's not that's not the case with me. I'll say that's not the case I, with me. I believe it. it. I believe it. And I know another couple that drive for FedEx and oh a couple other couples and they're doing fabulous. Yeah. I gotta go back to though at some point, and I think John, you probably can jump in here too on this. I gotta go back to at some point. When I hear somebody start talking about how bad they're doing and how bad the company is they're with, you've always got to kind of sit back at some point and go, but how do you run? How do you handle your business? How do you handle your metrics? How do you handle your expenses? I'm not saying every company is good or every company is bad, but sometimes there are some bad drivers who just want to blame everybody else. Would you guys agree with that? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Like he has said so earlier, drivers. before I... Before I got on here, you had said something about uh, your experience when you were training, how some of the, you couldn't believe some of these people were going to get in a truck and go out on the road. And I'll tell you, when I first went over the road, uh, in order to get an over the road job, I had to get in with a company and, and get in a truck with a trainer. And I got in a truck with a trainer and another guy who was a student never drove anything before. Um, they ended up taking that student, putting him on a bus, shipping him from New Mexico back to, to his home state of Georgia. He couldn't do it. Um, wow. And we got to a place out in California, some nurseries where we were delivering uh, foliage loads, uh, flowers and stuff like that. And there was a, a, a an odd driveway that you had to back down to get in to deliver this load. And the, the trainer says, I, I better handle this. And I, I got nothing to say, you know, I, I, I just sat over there and mind my business. He couldn't do it. And I, to me, this business is you either got it or you don't. I, I got in the driver's seat and I backed down that driveway like, it, like you know, it was a normal situation for me. And he said, I don't know what you're doing with me. You're better at this than I am. And I appreciated his honesty in that. But that's why I've commented in here. I've seen some trainers that 
that I kind of question whether or not they belong in a truck, you know? Oh, that's the truth. Some guys are in there for the, for the paycheck. I mean, that's the truth. For you sure, have to have yeah. patience. I mean, I, I, I tell you, when you hear some things with some of these students, I mean, I get into a truck and we're driving for the first time, and I always let the student drive first. I sit and, I sit and observe, and you drive, and we talk. And I, the student's like, oh, well, you know, uh, I was with the other company, and yeah, you know, the trainer kicked me off the truck because I drove off the road. Yeah. I said, <laughs> we didn't you drove off the road. Can you, well, let's expound on that, please. Explain. This guy evidently drove off the road, off the highway. The trainer says he's trying oh. to kill him, so he kicked him off the truck right there. So I was nervous the whole time, and, and I had a bad feeling about this guy, and he was a horrible, horrible student. So you could kind of get your, you know, this is the type of guy who jumps out in his boxers, puts his feet up on my dash, bare feet, smoking a cigarette, boxer shorts on as I'm driving. Like, look, guy, <laughs> you know, this is he, he, I mean, he had the mindset that we were sharing the truck, not like it wasn't mine. We were sharing right. it, yeah. you know, type of that deal. I'd hear the brakes get pulled like, and I'm like, wait a minute. I know we're not, we could, can't be where we're at. We'd be four hours short. And he's like, I, I'm done. I'm done. I'm tired. Yeah, like, guy, oh, you got Lord. you got six and a half hours on your clock. What do you mean you're done? You're not done. Let's do this, fellas. Let's do this. I'm gonna go back to you, James, real quick. James, sure. give me give me two letters of the alphabet, and I'm gonna count up from the bottom and give away a lanyard. All right, uh, two letters of the alphabet. You said, yeah. Yes, sir. All right, let's go with uh, B and okay. and uh, J. B and J. So I'm looking for the first B and J and any of the names I come across have to have both. The gutter. Have to have both B and J. We may have to make a concession. Hold on. Gonna give away another one here. Thanks for one your of my payment. letters too. Yep, okay. yep. <laughs> Yeah. I accept. I accept. Are those are those uh, Red Viking trucker lanyards? Is that what you got, sir? These lanyards. As a matter of fact, James, when we're done, send me your your mailing address. These lanyards say "Hustle, Intensity, Focus, Respect." They have awesome. a place at the bottom oh, here. Cool. <laughs> yeah, so send me. I'll get you. I'll get you one for popping in. But I don't. I'm not seeing a B and J. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the next closest one. Um, Brandon Frakes. Brandon Frakes. We're going to go with you, sir. Brandon Frakes, send me your address to support at redvikingtrucker.com or redvikingtruckernation at gmail.com. We're going to give you a lanyard. John, give me a number between 1 and 15. 10. All right. I'm going to scroll up. I'm just doing it doing it wildly. I'm going to count down from T. Scott Me. His, uh, his comment was expediters are almost always owner ops. I'm going to count down from that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Jeff Edwards, Jeff Edwards, Jeff Edwards, you have won a lanyard from John. Hustle, intensity, focus, respect. So send me an email to support at redvikingtrucker.com or redvikingtruckernation at gmail.com, and I will get you a lanyard in the mail. Let's get back to you, James, real quick, sir. Sure thing. Where's your journey now? Because you've had some success out here. You're 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 on running under your own authority now, right? Yeah. Since uh, last September, I, I started my authority. After um, how many years you've been out here total? Twenty. Um, I'm trying to think back. Uh, what a few year days. it was. Man, it's 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 <laughs> we're, we're, a day, we're, a day we're, or two. <laughs> we're, we're, we're a good deal over 20 years. Uh, I, I'm going to say uh, uh, at least 24, 24 or so years uh, all over the place. And you just got your own authority in, since September's first time having your own authority after yep. all the years. Yep, that's right. Um, I did, you know, lease on other stuff. Uh, I owned uh, uh, dump trucks that stayed inside New York City. They ran Union. Um, I ran... In that situation, I ran under somebody else's business as well. Um, but uh, as far as uh, out here over the road, uh, I, I, I just got my authority last September. And prior to that, I was either a company man or a lease operator, you know, owning a truck, leased onto somebody else situation. And I, I'll be honest with you, it, I, I turned to YouTube and you know, looking for information uh, to, to educate myself 
prior to getting into a lease situation just because of the nightmares that I had heard. Right. And I, I will say this, and I cannot speak of anything that I did not, like I said in my video the other night, man, it, a lot of people faulted you for information you share, but not realizing how it is you go about getting the information. Um, well, in, fair, in fairness to you making that comment since you brought it up, because I, I, I watched the whole video, man, because it was just good to see you back. I wonder what happened. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But, uh, you know, people that have given me grief out here, listen, I, I don't understand it. I, I Everything I've ever done, when I bit down and said, you know what, I'm, I'm interested. I want to do better at this business. I found a mentor. I found a coach. I, I followed the people that were already having success to try to speed my success up. I learned yeah. that. I learned that my first two times of making $100,000. I realized there's certain processes, if you follow them, You'll get there a lot quicker than somebody else. This business has not been brain surgery for me. This business has been very simple, but I'm also not scared of work. I'm not scared of a seven day work week. I'm not scared of 14, 16, 18 hour days. I'm not scared of being gone for two, three weeks to get my experience. Some people, they, they say they want to make a lot of money, but you you guys both know, and John, you know, they're training. They say that. And then the very first weekend, I need to be home. <laughs> Yeah, this yeah. is if you, if you if you need a day off, this this is probably not the business for you. You know, um, when I'm out here on the road, that to me that's the worst thing that could happen. I hate to sit still. If I'm going to sit still, it it better be for better money. That's that's kind of how I look at it. Otherwise, I, I need to keep moving. I I prefer it. Um, now, are you still quite sitting still, still on the road? Yeah. Are you Man. still sitting, are you still sitting still tonight, James? Because I know in the video you talked about you want to take a nap. Well, I was sitting in, in a city about 60 miles away from here, and I ate that 60 miles today rather than tomorrow when I'll take the load on. But I'm right. taking the load on tomorrow. And I, I took that time uh, to, to sit and book future loads. I, I, I've got enough. I took these two days, and in that two days, I booked a good uh, week and a half of solid movement. So – I'll, I'll do the same thing when I'm sitting at a dock delivering. I'll find other loads to get onto. And, and you're making actually a pretty good point there, too. People aren't realizing that that's part of work. That's part of the business. That's yeah. part of being an owner operator. That, that, that consists of work. See, a lot of times when I did my pest control, I had that where I, I, oh, I got to go make phone calls. A lot of people, he, he's, he's not working. He's do, that's work. I'd be sitting there, I'd bang out two, 300 phone calls. That's work, just like you're doing as you're booking loads or any truck drivers booking loads. That's part of work. Well, the same, the same thing, too. The same thing in the knowledge of the metrics to go, you know what? It might be better that I sit for two days rather than take some of these cheap loads and to get the loads I know on Sunday, because that's what you mentioned in, in your video, James. Yep. That your Sunday loads all of a sudden start stacking up better, much better rates. And it was worth you sitting for two days versus losing your mind. Patience. Absolutely. Absolutely. Patience is a, a tremendous virtue in this business. You've got to have it. Sometimes you you have to think about strategy. And sometimes sitting still, take the time. Take the time to get your paperwork in order. If you have the type of situation where you're allowed to look for loads and stuff like that, don't jump on loads. Learn how to strategically look at loads. I look at how long a load has been posted. I, I look at where the load is located and where the delivery is. And just over time, you start to realize, okay, there's a good chance that this is a specific type of load. I start to ask certain questions that's going to get me more information that a lot of these brokers look to hide. They don't want us to know who the shipper is. They don't want us to know exactly where we're going or what the commodity is and stuff like that because that could change what the, the, the load is, is worth. And right. that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking to know everything they know. And if you they know shit, yeah, I, I need to know what's going on. And you know, that's some, some will let you get it. Some won't. If I'm on the phone with the wrong guy, I'll hang up and call back 10 minutes later and get a different guy in that <laughs> office. That. No, that's, that's brilliant. I love that. I love that. I've shoot. I, I've done that in my dispatch office. If I get the wrong dispatcher, I'll hang up. And I'll Absolutely. call right back and get the till I get the right person. Yeah, they, the, take you know? it, they take it personal. I mean, listen, this guy's making the same money as this guy is, as long as that load gets covered. But this guy over here doesn't want to tell me anything. Now, you know, some I don't really know how these brokers are getting paid, but if it's the one thing I figured out is when you get out here and you're under your own authority, after a while, get contract authority, get broker authority, 
remove that that element from your life if you can. And that's where I'm 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 aiming at that. Yeah, that's well, let me let me ask you this since you bring that up because that's a good point. And you're one of the first you're one of the first people on YouTube I've heard mention those terms. So I've got to make some assumptions here. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Each of those authorities is a different cost for the insurance is what I'm guessing, right? It's all different. Yes. So you, it's all it's all different. The the contract authority. Now, I, I know that I want them, but I don't know 100 percent all of of the the prices or, or laws or I, I haven't touched base on all that stuff yet because I'm not ready. But I know that that's the direction in which I want to go just for what it is I want my end game to be. I want contract authority, uh, common authority, and broker authority. Right. With those three authorities, you don't need anybody else except – They're jack of all trades. That's it. All you need is shippers. Shippers, manufacturing companies, you can now go out and solicitate – all your own contracts from anybody. If you want to go talk to somebody at Lowe's and you want to get set up with a contract in an area or something like that, and there is nothing that stops them from being able to use you. If I'm pulling loads for J.B. Hunt for Lowe's and I'm pulling loads for Panther for, J for, for, for Lowe's, obviously there is no uh, particular contract that says – that Lowe's has to do business with either one of them specifically. Right. They're, they're getting those loads from a, another type of load board. Right. And I right. don't have access to that load board because I don't have broker authority and contract authority. Contract authority just allows you to engage in contracts. But that broker authority, that's what lets you find out what these shippers are actually paying Right now, our industry is being hammered down by brokers setting the market value of these loads. Now, if I now can that... interrupt you real quickly, I apologize, but that, having that contract authority. Now, do you have to have that contract authority in order to go out and solicit a contract, like say, say from like M and M Mars or from like uh, these some of these larger uh, companies where you can go get four or five loads off them, and that was set no. you up for you don't know. Okay. If you have a contract authority, it just allows you to engage in contracts. Okay. But, like, let's say uh, I live in the middle of nowhere, Tennessee, very small, mountainy place. There's nothing there. A lot of lumber companies and nursery companies. I'm hooked up with a nursery company. I move loads for them. Um, am I their sole guy? No. I'm a small guy. But they have X amount of loads that they will afford me on a weekly basis if that's what I want. Now, if I, it, the contract, it, that just, I guess, uh, is going to allow you to set guidelines within your relationship. Um, you have to give me so many loads per week, and I have to give it to you at this rate for okay. this period of time. And that, marginally is what companies like FedEx has got going on, Panther has going on, Landstar has going on. They have like that would protect them against fluctuations in the market basically. Exactly. Kind of gives them... Exactly. Right. It, it, and that's Okay, that's now I understand way. what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a good way a good point to to put it out. It's it's protecting you in in the fluctuation of market stuff. But that broker, that broker authority, oh man, that right there is I am so focused on that right now um i, I just want to get myself to a good level playing field and then i want to attack that broker authority situation um i know another carrier he's in my state he's also on youtube um real nice guy very informative uh i believe he recently got his broker authority and he he shares a lot of information um, making good, valid points to – the bottom line is if, if us as drivers, if we accept that rate, that's going to become the rate. Going rate, yes. Yeah. In the market. Market but makers we, are going to stock market. Yeah. If we don't accept the rate, which would take an enormous amount of agreement on, on a huge scale among drivers and, and owners – 
uh, then it would change. You know, these, these brokers would realize, okay, they caught on to us. They're not going to do our work. We're sinking. Nobody's moving our loads. What are we going to do now? Well, right. they're going to have to, they're going to have to give us more money to get us to move the freight. It's kind of like the unions do only the guys in the unions. They're going and fighting for you. Right. If we, if we're not standing up for ourselves is what's going on here. Oh, and, is. No. And we're accepting poor rates. I won't do it. I, I've said it many times. I don't know if anybody's ever heard me. I, no cheap freight. It, it, they're not getting paid uh, a cheap freight rate to move this freight, and we're the ones moving it. But we're now, that's a question I wanted it. to ask you about that. Now, is it does it help? And I'll pose the doing that now. Wouldn't that help just to take a cheaper load and not sit, or 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 does taking just is just waiting on that that uh, better freight? Help well, you I mean, out the I mean, obviously you're doing that, so numbers wise, that's helping you out. Obviously, when you know, when I was younger, I I had this mentality that as long as I come home with more money than I had when I left home, I did good. And I I still don't necessarily shoot that theory in the foot, <laughs> uh, but I figure it it it. it retrospectively costs about 60 cents a mile to run my truck. So <laughs> if, if uh, what, what's your average uh, company man getting paid? We'll say 50 cents a mile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, teams are getting, you know, teams are 65, 70 cents a mile. There's some so, teams out there running for 50, 55 cents a mile. So yeah. Okay. So if I'm out here and I'm getting a dollar 20 a mile, then I'm making 60 cents a mile. And my truck is making 60 cents a mile, which it's going to take to run it. Right. That's not acceptable to me. Um, Because then I, all I did was create my schedule. I didn't create a business. Right. So for me, at $1.20 a mile, which I'm, I'm looking at, at, at big companies like J.B. Hunt, uh, TQL is a broker, Um ch robinson all these brokers are posting loads uh believe it or not I i've seen stuff here in the past few days 68 78 cents a mile they're looking to get carriers to move loads for that for that rate your fuel prices are down a little bit you know but my thing is just because the fuel prices go down why does that mean the freight rates need to go down they're not right. going down for the for the people who need those those products moved. Lowe's is not paying less for well, the fuel surcharge went down for that anyways. Right. Which I don't really see much from a fuel surcharge. I'm just getting an overall rate. Uh, so to me, I'm tr I'm still at the mentality of trying to get as close to three dollars a mile as I possibly can. Do I achieve well, it? Yeah. Well, let me. Say let me say this too, though, James. And again, you know, you got all this experience out here, 24 years. John's been out here, you know, leasing for the last three, three years, three years and five months. I go back to my lease calculator, man. I mean, I, when I put those numbers in, I was doing those kind of computations three, four months in the business because I understood metrics. I'm like, there's a, there's guys out here running for a dollar six, dollar eighteen, dollar thirty six cents a mile, and they're responsible for everything in that truck, other than base plates and other than other than the, the cargo insurance. I'm like. It just none of it made any sense. But then I realized there's people out here with no business sense and they're thinking, well, I'm, I'm a, I've got an LLC, so I'm self-employed. I'm like, you're one accident. You're one breakdown away from disaster financially. There's no pride in that to me. Man, yeah, I mean, yeah, I see that right. very odd when when a, when a lot of the students get in the truck, their first their first thing is I have to get my LLC. They're so obsessed with just getting their LLC. I'm like, listen, man, learn the business. What are you even worried about that? Go sole proprietor, go get your LLC. You're in no hurry to do this. I mean, yeah. you could take it one step at a time. You, know, you, you don't have to go. You, you already have, you just get your EIN. That's all you need. And that's all you need to do. You know, go sole proprietor for the first six months, put yourself together, then figure out if you want to go S Corp. If you want, you don't even know what you want to do, how you want to structure your business, how you, how you want to expand, how you want to grow. And I hear these kids get in the truck. And the first thing they say is I, I got to go get my, uh, go get my, uh, S Corp, my LLC, my LLC. And do you even know what an LLC means? Do you, do you even know what those that acronym means? You know? Well, hold on, hold on one second. I want to do this with both you guys again. Thank you both for being here. We have James right here. His, what's your trucking channel, James? Bless Trucker. Bless Trucker on YouTube. Then you got Johnny on the spot, John Spano with KLLM. 
I want to give away two more lanyards right now. Then we're going to go to some some uh, some some comments. Um, I'm going to go back to the super chats so far. One Mark DC, one Mark DC. Please send me your shipping address and your full name and your contact phone number. One Mark DC. I will send you a lanyard. Elijah Ray, Elijah Ray, same thing. Please send me your shipping information. Please send me your full name and your a, a contact phone number. And Jeffrey Mudgett, Jeffrey, I know you called in. And then with these two gentlemen popped in. Jeffrey, we'll try and get you back on here in just a moment. But also, please, I'll get your lanyard out. Let's get back to the actual channel. I went away from the channel briefly while we we're talking to you guys. One of the things I like about both of you guys, when I listen to you talk, you're both so clear headed about all the things, you know, like, you know, what I'm saying there's like, there's no there's no hesitation. There's no stumbling, fumbling and bumbling through some of the the mindset, because mindset out here, I think, is everything. Mindset is exactly why you succeed or fail. You know. You guys hear me? Yeah, okay? okay, absolutely. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. So somebody on there with your on your channel was saying, Elijah Ray, you're you're very welcome. Happy happy to to be appreciated. Believe it. Good, Elijah Ray. Yep, and Elijah Ray. Let me go back through. Make sure we don't have any questions here. Um, Christian Figueroa said he has his S corp up and running. One of the things I learned, and I'll get my accountant on because our accountant's finalizing our taxes. But I did an LLC, but there's a one off form that the accountant can do for you with rather than going and getting an S corp up front. They can file as an S corp just using your LLC and, and get the same benefits, but it saves you about six, seven hundred bucks from the tax purposes. Let me ask you this too, James. Who's doing all your like billing and your paperwork and all that? Is your wife handling that? My wife helps me a little bit, but no. I, I am when I say I am a one man gig, I am a one man gig. If you have any recommendations, though, I, I'm open to it because it's killing me. It's got to be. A, yeah, to, to having to keep track of all this stuff is, is 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 it's 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 ringing me out. Well, I would tell you I would tell you this, Jeffrey. Like he he uses a program. I think it's called Fogline, okay. and it yeah, keeps Fogline track. Of all, yeah, it keeps track of all his stuff. And he said it's so it's so tight, so good because it keeps track of all your billing stuff. Plus, and I'm sure you're using a factoring company, right? Yeah, yeah. He keeps track of all your stuff, all your expenses. So he said he presses a button. And he files his own taxes using the fog line software on top of all that. Besides fog the fog line. Okay, yeah, he says one line. printout. He could do off yeah. one printout. I gotta I gotta check that out. I, I you know I I, I follow Truck him. and Pro. Subscribe to what's that? Truck and Pro. What's that? Yeah, Truck and Pro. It this is for, for, uh, from Fog Line Software. It's called Truck and Pro. T R U C K N P R O. Truck and Pro. That's what he's using. Truck yes. and Pro. Okay. Well, he, check that out. He has a couple. He has a couple videos on his channel too. I'm not going to keep you guys much longer because I'm expecting the blonde Viking wife and her mother to walk in any moment. They've been down in Charlotte at the ballet tonight, so me and the Beagle been hanging out. Um, right let me, let's give away a few more lanyards, though. Let's give away a few more lanyards. John, give me another. Give me a, a, a letter of the alphabet, sir. I'm going to go with uh, B. B. Oh, by the way, John, make sure. You you send me your shit. Um, bad news, Channel Seven. Bad news, Channel Seven. Bad news, Channel Seven. You have a lanyard. Hustle, intensity, focus, respect. Please send me your shipping information to Red Viking Trucker Nation at gmail.com or support at Red Viking Trucker .com. Um, James. Yes, sir. Same thing. One more time. Give me, give me a letter of the alphabet, sir. V. Victor. V is in Victor. Yes, sir. V is in Victor. V is in Victor. All, all the way up to the top. As far as we go. Is that what you're um, doing? Yep, that's what I'm doing. Going back to the top. It's not all the way to the top, um, but it's as far north as it'll go. And you just look for a V? I'm looking for a V in the name. Might be tough. Might be tough. Yeah, V is probably not a, a so common thing. You want to check you want to buy another consonant? You want to you want to use Vanna and buy another consonant? Should we should we buy a, another? All right, let's go with uh, how about M? M. M. That'll be a good one. Yeah, That'll be a good one. Them. Okay. Um, um, hold on one second. I'm scrolling back from the top. No, no moderators count, right? No, we can use my well. Montana Hummingbird already got one. I sent her one today because her book was late. Her book was late. 
I, I want to say thank you to to Montana for appreciating my honesty. I just saw that. Sorry, I missed the comment. I've got some of the best subscribers, man. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. You so do. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna buy a different valve, Captain Jack. Captain Jack, you're on here, sir. I met you at a truck stop about two months ago in the middle of the morning. So, Captain Jack, please. Send me your full name, your full address, your phone number. I'll get you a lanyard out. Hustle intensity, focus, respect. Okay. And uh, just to make it quick, just to make it quick, let me see if anybody else is, uh, no, nobody else is asking for a link. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and wind this up, but I'm going to give two more of these out. I'm going to go ahead and just pick some names. How about that, fellas? Dustin Williams. Dustin Williams, Dustin Williams, Dustin Williams. Go ahead and Dustin Williams, you you want a lanyard, sir? <laughs> me, me, me. <laughs> me, me. Full name, full address, full number, redvikingtruckernation at gmail.com or support at redvikingtrucker.com. Um, okay, Mark. Yep. Okay, Mark, Mark was also, Mark was somebody that, that just want a lanyard too. So, Mark, I'll get you that. And then let's give one more out, and we're going to go ahead and call this. And now you guys have been so so patient being here, both of you. Um, I'm happy to be here. Hey, I, absolutely. I've, I've, ever since our first go round, when we were terribly interrupted by the nonsense, <laughs> I, I've wanted to to come back and talk with you so much. Uh, I, I I I had to step away the last few months. I had to get some things straightened out with all the you know, the issues with that other truck and stuff. I, I really had to get focused and get in there and, and bust my butt to get everything straight and in order. And, but we're back at it, man. I'm back on the road strong and, and I'm going to, I'm going to make videos and, and, and share my, my, uh, as I go through, I'm going to share anything. You never know what somebody needs to know or wants to know, you know? I agree. Yeah. I agree. We're, I'm going to give one more out right now. Um, Elisana Peta, Elisana Peta. Please send me your full shipping address, your full name, and your contact phone number to Red Viking Trucker Nation or support at redvikingtrucker.com, one of the two. Mr. Spano, you want to add anything before we, we, we wind this down? You've been so good to pull over, man, and do this stream. No problem at all. Hey, it, it is my pleasure. Uh, the only thing I can add is, I mean, it, try, this business is what you make of it. It, re it really is. You're going you're gonna to run into, I mean, with anything, you're going to run into your hard times. You're going to run into your... Uh, trouble with dispatchers you're, you're this you're that you're going to run into trouble out here on the road you're going to but if you hustle and just like hustle intensity focus yep. you put that down you're going to you're going to pocket some change you're going to do well in this business do yeah. real well. I, I agree james eli shaw james eli shaw see you in here sir current navy guy about to get out shoot me your address you want me to get you another lanyard i think we've given more than 10 out now but I'll get those sent out on Monday morning when when I before I leave because we're leaving back on the road I believe Tuesday morning early. I'll get those out. I want to thank my guests tonight for being on the on the live stream. We've got James. He goes by Blessed Trucker on YouTube. Been out here 24 years. He's the son of police officers, but he looks like a biker. And he's a great dude. And then got Johnny on the spot. And his his YouTube channel is Johnny on the spot. His YouTube channel. You know, tell him one more time what your YouTube channel consists of. Actually, it's a little bit of trucking, a little bit of uh, a little bit of playing the game, play a little gambling football, with stock trade, a lot, whole lot of stock trading. So if you want to learn how to trade stocks, um, actually I got about three or four videos with uh, some pretty good tips, pointers on just beginning, and we're going to start getting into um, some of the more intricate stuff. Uh, but that that's a little bit down the line. We kind of want to lay the foundation first because uh, yep. without without that, it's we're going to be going nowhere. Yep. Yep. I agree. And uh, hold on one second. Somebody asked, they asked for your, your YouTube channel one more time, James. Blessed Trucker. B-L-E-S-S-E-D Trucker. Yep. And again, folks, I want to thank all my subscribers for watching tonight. All the ones that haven't subscribed, please, please subscribe. Um, subscribe, like, comment, and share. Would love to have you on the channel. I've got, I'm going to have these, these lanyards with me as I drive this coming next two weeks. So if you see me out, say hi, I'll give you a lanyard. Um, and I appreciate all my subscribers. People like this on my channel, invaluable to make their time. James making his time, Johnny making the time. Come on here and share with you guys how they've succeeded in trucking and how they've done it like people say it can't be done and still succeeded. So I want to thank both you guys for being here. James. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me here. Happy to be here. Trucker, we are out of here.